have uh, uh, our Gen 1 bird that we talked about. It's called One Hopsat, but we also have a Generation 2 bird uh, called Two Hopsat. That is basically uh, a structured technology from uh, NASA Ames Research Center where they had uh, a program that uh, they spent a lot of time on developing, which uh, was never launched. It was put on the shelf uh, for reasons unknown to us, but we came along. We saw the technology, we looked at this, and we said it could be very useful to us. We did a tech transfer. We licensed some of the technology and the patents, and we also uh, acquired a Space Act agreement with the support of NASA Ames to take their hardware and bring it to our facility and get it ready for a launch next year, late next year or possibly uh, early uh, 2018. We see this as a, you know, just a, a little bump in the road. Uh, a couple of what they call anomalies, we've heard that word, okay, some explosions, right? Uh, unexplained, but you know, they, they can figure these things out and they'll get right back on track. And eventually you went from, you know, 200 to 500 million dollar launch rockets to, you know, they're gonna be five million dollars in just a, a year. Five million dollars for a launch. It's unheard of. And so that's going to create so much opportunity to put remote sensing in space and in small form factors, but even the bigger form factors of SpaceX or the, the orbital uh, platforms will still be great for that. I think uh, traditionally the educated user is government, ISR, uh, intelligence, surveillance, reconnaissance. Uh, that's always going to be in play globally. All the, all the nations out here always want to keep an eye. There's so much going on right now. We all understand. We look in the news and terrible things going on. And, and um, you know, it's a trade-off of you know, spy satellites versus the good for mankind looking, trying to uh, intercept any, any of the bad guys out there. And then moving on to the enterprise commercial, you see ag is you know, in that arena. You see infrastructure, utilities. But eventually, it's going consumer. It's just like the GPS model, where it was a government enterprise system for the longest time, but you ask yourself, how often do you use GPS today? You probably use it 70, 100 times a day. You don't even realize it. It's all location-based services. Same thing for remote sensing. It's just not earth imaging or earth observations. Tons of remote sensing that can go on these smaller platforms and be brought to the masses of the consumer uh, networks. We want to use the next technology that comes out. We don't want to design a platform that lasts 10 to 15 years and wait for that to hit its life cycle. We're designing life cycles in three to five years right now. We might be designing them in one to two year platforms soon enough because they'll be cheaper. The rockets will be cheaper and we can do that and introduce new technology as it comes online and keep that process going. Like I said, you can't change optics, the wavelength, diffraction limits of light, but what you can do is you can trick things out. There's a lot of the sensors on board that are able to see more with the available light. So the, the light's the same, the availability of the light is coming in at, at your aperture the same, but the sensors are becoming exponentially more sensitive and with better signal to noise ratios. And that in turn will give you a better resolution without really doing anything. We're actually putting a laser comp system on a Gen 2 bird. We're going to test out a 10 gigabit per second laser comp system. Uh, it's, it's a dicey area right now. We think RF is never going to go away. Uh, there are always going to be uh, lots of needs for radio frequency, uh, but I think the optical communication with a radio frequency communication is a good complement, and you'll see a lot more laser optical communication systems coming online with ground terminals coming online to the point where that bandwidth is coming down quicker, but you know, it, it has its trade-offs.